When you're selecting a mooring line based on durability, it's important to understand what actually drives fatigue. For most mooring operations, the constant loading and unloading of the rope results in tension fatigue, which we'll describe here as the sum of two important wear modes, abrasion and creep. We will discuss both of these wear modes in detail, but first, let's look at abrasion. While more obvious forms of external abrasion are easy to see and understand, internal abrasion also occurs as the rope's strands rub against each other and against the contact surfaces of the vessel. This mechanical damage will slowly degrade the rope's load carrying capability and increase stress on the yarns that are still fully intact. As you compare spec sheets for products, you may notice that Samson's mooring lines typically have a higher linear density than our competitors. This is because we design our ropes based on performance needs and therefore use a higher twist ratio. The result is greater material content and a tighter rope structure. This increases abrasion resistance, improves handling, reduces snagging, and lowers the stress on each individual fiber. Once our products are in the field, we also encourage and advise our customers on what they can do to reduce abrasion in their operations. For example, identifying common contact points and making sure deck surfaces are properly finished and maintained. This reduced roughness on the surface will allow the mooring lines to slide more easily, requiring less energy and making the line less prone to abrasion damage. More intact fiber means greater ability to withstand those tension cycles over time. The second primary contributor to tension fatigue is creep. Creep only occurs at the molecular level and describes the elongation of the fibers as the polymer chains slide during sustained long-term loading. Creep rates are increased by high stress and elevated temperatures. Because stress and temperature dictate the creep rate of the fiber, we can analyze the rope's expected service life using these two pieces of information. Increased stress is fairly straightforward. For a given rope, higher loads result in higher stress on the fiber. For a given load, ropes made with more material will result in lower stress on the fiber. This is one reason why rope design matters in durability. Higher strand twist levels might not increase the rope's initial strength, but will reduce the stress on the fibers during cyclic loading, thereby increasing its life, all things being equal. When your lines are exposed to higher than expected peak loads from a storm or unplanned conditions, the lines may experience accelerated fatigue. These events can reduce the remaining safety margin of your system by degrading the rope's condition more rapidly than anticipated compared to normal loading conditions. Temperature, the second factor influencing creep rates, is a little more complex. The polymers that make up the rope demonstrate what's called viscoelastic behavior, meaning that the molecules will slowly slip and stretch during loading cycles. Most of this stretch is elastic, meaning that it will return to its original state. However, some of the energy absorbed from that elongation in the material is dissipated as heat. In simpler terms, as the rope cycles, the temperature of the rope increases until it comes to a steady state, which can further accelerate fatigue. Understanding how unplanned loading conditions can lead to heating helps reduce the risk of further accelerating line fatigue and should be considered in rope design and deployment. Samson experts have developed a range of tools that can be used to help with product selection, taking these factors into consideration. Depending on your needs, we can advise on how they will contribute to overall line life, help you set and manage retirement and maintenance schedules, or review other operational considerations. 